Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, Mishmash Monday. We got a lot to get to today. Uh, had an interesting week. Last week we had our bi-monthly tool meet at Long Island. And uh, I have a little bit of footage of that. Let me throw that in. There. Now, for me, the best part of uh, of the meet is meeting up with my friends and, and talking tools and just having a great time. And such a great bunch of people go there. And uh, this this uh, week, uh, they were very generous. A lot of them brought some gifts for, for the show, for the channel, for me. And let me show you what we got. And uh, I think you'll find it pretty Before interesting. Before we get to the generous gifts that I received, uh, I bought this. Uh, it's funny because I looked at this and I said, boy, what is this? And I, I guess I've been watching too many Mr. Pete videos because the first thing I thought was some kind of... Uh, this was some kind of mold for making uh, castings, you know, because you could see this this screws out. And then I figured that, you know, you would make the mold and then you would screw it in so you could take it out. But take a look at this and uh, you see how this works, you know, when you screw this together, it closes. And when you open it up, it opens up. And uh, now there are some of you that will know exactly what it is and some of you like me who had no idea what it is. But once you found out, you're like, oh, I can't believe I didn't know what that was. I'm going to tell you what this is at the end of the video, so, you know, put on your thinking caps. Tell me what you think this is. It's wood. It's old. It's got to be close to 100 years old, right? But uh, I'll tell you what this is at the end of the video. Really Okay, cool. the first thing I got, Rich, my buddy Rich from Long Island, gave me this great United States Marine Corps mug. And <clears throat> look at the size of this. Huh? This is huge. And I love the back here, how this is uh, pressed glass like this. I always like that. Anyway, Rich, thank you so much. I will uh, definitely put this upstairs with the collection. It's really nice. You don't see too many of these floating around. Uh, next up, my buddy Mark. Look at this. Now, I have a whole collection of these. Uh, I must have... I bought a box years ago of, of these and the popular mechanics, popular science. But uh, Mark got this. Look at this. These are obviously popular mechanics here. Uh, this one's called, uh, it's a popular mechanics for what to make, Mechanics Illustrated. And uh, Mark came across these at uh, like a tag sale or something and he thought it would be cool. Uh, for the, I don't know if you've ever seen these. You know, back then magazines were so amazing. You know, what everything they had. Remember this guy? <laughs> Remember Charles Atlas? <laughs> I'm really showing my age, huh? But um, here's what's great is that even the ads in here were fantastic because... Uh, you know, there were so many opportunities back then, you know, a lot of people on anything on how to, you know, making keys, becoming a locksmith, all kinds of advertisements. There was always something that guys were trying to do to make money on the side. And, and, uh, a lot of these were filled with those kind of small ads, but then also they had tons of articles on how to make things and, um, it was just, they were such great magazines, you know, these, and um, every time I look through them, even today, these magazines still hold up. They're just fantastic as far as every, all the information they have, all the illustrations they have. Look at this. A durable fish scaler easily made from power hacksaw blades. You know, we don't do too many fish scaling these days. I mean, I remember my grandfather, Pinecone. 
uh, indicate humidity to forecast weather. Huh, who knew that, right? I guess that when the pine clo uh, cones open and close, it could tell. I mean, there are things in here that still hold up. And you remember photography years ago was a big hobby. You know, back then it was for me, I know. But, uh, you know, obviously with the digital cameras and especially the phones today, photography is long since gone. But um, just amazing how the fishing lures. I mean, people had hobbies back then. That's what made guys so interesting. And today, uh, a lot of my friends, all they do is work overtime and they're kind of they're kind of dull, you know. So it's always nice when you see guys that have hobbies and people that are interested in other things. Such great advertisements in these magazines. If ever you come across a bunch, these were fantastic. And here's, this is from 1946. Talk about getting your money's worth. Next up, my buddy Bruce gave me these. And what this is, is two pieces of black walnut. And look at these beautiful pieces of wood here. And you know something, obviously you could see here, I'm just showing here with the light, but you could see how nice this is going. This is rough sawn. Can you, and you could see already the grain on here and the beautiful, this is just two beautiful pieces. And these are dried in the shed. And you know, when you dry wood, it takes, you know, every bit of at least a year to dry out a piece of wood. And these are nice and dry. So we're going to make something out of this black walnut. Thanks so much. Now, Bruce. next up, one of my favorite parts. I always get to the show very early because I, I want to miss the traffic going out there. And, and uh, one of the first people to arrive is my, my mentor, Dan. And, uh, you know, and we just love to talk about tools. I learned so much from him. And he brought me some more dowel pins because he knows I'm going to be making a, uh, a project with that. And... Uh, Look at that. These are beautiful. And, and if you know what dowel pins are, they're a hardened steel pin. And it's so good. I got a, a lot of wire bending jig that I want to make up. Uh, but he also, uh, he picked this up actually at the show and just gave it to me because he likes to, he knows I like crate hammers. I've never seen one like this before. This is very unusual. Never seen this before. So uh, we're going to try and get on this. It's very interesting. Nail puller, crate puller. And two really nice perfect handle screwdrivers. And uh, or perfect handle style. Look at the tips are beautiful on here. You know, not much wear on them. And uh, these are long. I mean, you know, these are like uh, 14 inches long. So these and this one here, you can see here, uh, it says steel warranted. Usually when I had this on here, a lot of times these came from Germany and whatnot. But we'll have to clean this up and take a look at it. But these are the handles are tight. See. I have to tell you, I'm not a fan of wood and steel. Anytime you have wood and steel, because the wood expands differently than the steel. And, and a lot of times, anytime you have a wood and steel combination, wood is going to loosen up eventually because it expands, it contracts, and that's why these fell out of favor. Wooden handle screwdrivers that were mixed with metal. It's one thing if you have a piece of wood over, but you're always there. Eventually, they loosen up, so it's when you find them in, in that they're tight, it's a really good find. Okay, next up, anybody that's been with the channel for a while knows that I'm a big fan of Taiwanese tools, and that's because Taiwan has uh, decided that they're going to put out quality goods they have for the last 10 years, and uh, they're not putting out any junk. And just like Japan, you know, great anything that comes from Japan is in good is good stuff. Switzerland, you don't find junk coming out of Switzerland. But there are some countries that, you know, aren't, you know, you can, it's hit and miss, you know. And um, so when I found out that uh, Craftsman was remaking their whole line, you know, and Lowe's is starting to, uh, to hold Craftsman tools. And then, you know, what a fan of Craftsman I am in Miller's Falls. They're my two favorite. But uh, the best part is Craftsman is now making tools that are mostly a lot of it from Taiwan fantastic tooling i'm telling you this stuff for the money it's taiwan is the best tools out there for the money right now and uh so i went to uh lowe's the other day and they're stocking up for christmas and things like that let me show you some of the cool things uh that craftsman has
Now I had to take a good look at this screwdriver because uh, I'll tell you, look at the handle on this screwdriver. It's just unbelievable. You know, they used to have the uh, the blue painted, but now it's like, look, it's like a cobalt blue. And I am a huge fan of anything cobalt blue. So I was looking this screwdriver over left and right and uh, I said, wow, look at that handle. Is that just not beautiful? I, I was really attracted to it. Now, it seems that Craftsman's making their boxes in the USA now, but with global materials. And they have some nice different ones, nice shape and things like that. But I don't know if they felt as strong as the Husky boxes, but uh, it is interesting. Okay, so uh, I couldn't help myself, you know. Like, like I need another screwdriver, you know. <laughs> but I cannot tell you how impressed I was. First of all, this is a 12-piece set. Came to, uh, it was $14.98 or whatever. So it's a little over a dollar a piece, you know. That's really a very economical screwdriver and uh, really nicely made. It comes with the magnetizer, demagnetizer, which is always good to have. Um, and you can see it's got the lifetime warranty. Um, and we'll give it a try, you know. I don't know. Now, it, it says here that the uh, alloy steel blades are heat treated or whatever. Uh, I like chrome vanadium, so we're going to have to see. I want to give these a test and see how they hold out. That's why I bought them. But you know, like I said, that blue, that blue is just, look at that. That just sold now me. You can see here, here's the older blue. It was like a, a solid darker blue. And then here is that, uh, that cobalt blue. Look at that. That's so, that's why I had to get these just to see. But I'm going to try them out and see how they hold up. And I, uh, I hope they're as good. The chrome vanadium is really strong, so I hope this uh, is very close. Okay, for today's project, we have the hammer coming up soon. Now, this is a, a what's called a glue-up, okay? You could see this is three pieces of pine that I, you know, just scrap wood I threw together. I made something out of it years ago, like a handle or something, and then uh, I cut it off, and this was scrap. So, but I always save the scrap. So, I'm going to make a small little hammer out of this, and I want to show you something that's really cool about mounting a handle in here with a blind wedge. Pretty cool, let's check it out. Now to make the handle, I'm just gonna use an old piece of two by four, split in half, just cut down the middle and I'm gonna use that to make the handle. Okay, here we are. Now, here's what's really interesting, and uh, I saw this years ago when I was doing a little woodworking and furniture work and things like that, and I just thought this was the coolest thing. Now, here we have our hammer. We drilled a little hole in here for the uh, handle. We made our ha handle. Again, this is all scrap with this old piece of two by four, and you can see this fits in here, you know, fairly good, you know, snug, right? But what we're going to do here, this is called the reverse or blind wedge. And uh, you see here, we drilled a hole in the bottom of the uh, in the bottom of the handle here. We drilled this little hole, and then we uh, made the wedge here. Now we have a little wooden wedge. The little wooden wedge will fit in like this here. But you see now, what we're going to do is when we push this in here with a little bit of glue, when we push this in here like this, the wedge will bottom out against the bottom over here of uh, of the hammer head. And it will push the wedge into the handle, expanding it, locking this handle into here. And it's such a cool little device. And this way you don't have to pin it or do anything like that. So we're going to put a little glue on. And then when we push this in like this, this wedge will push down on the handle and it will lock it in. And uh, here we have our hammer here. You can see the handle is now uh, banged in. The wedge expanded it. This will never come out. Uh, we did put some glue on there just to, so that the wedge will stay in here, but uh, this is solid. It won't come out, and that's the uh, blind wedge, which I always found pretty interesting. And you could see here, like I said, this was uh, just some scrap wood, and I will probably make the bottom handle red, but uh, that's just it because I wanted to show you that blind wedge. I always thought that was pretty interesting. Okay, and lastly, did you figure out what this is? Well, if you haven't, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. What this was was a hat stretcher. 
These were, remember, years ago, hats didn't come like they are now. Most of them are adjustable now. But years ago, they came according to sizes, seven and a quarter, seven and an eighth, according to the size. And a lot of times, if a hat was a little snug or something, or you want to keep it in shape, you would put this into the hat and open it up, and it would stretch it to the shape and, and keep it that way. So this is a hat stretcher. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you have a nice day. Take care now. Bye-bye.